Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Gitin Chaf Beis. We are on line two from the top of the Amid. Says the Gemara, Otzitz Shel Echot. Suppose we have a flower pot containing some plants. That flower pot has a hole on the bottom. It's a perforated flower pot which in effect makes that the content of that flower pot is considered mechubra lakarka, connected to the ground because it's feeding off the ground. The thing is we have two owners, Otzitz Shel Echad, the pot belongs to Ruvain, who's Raim Shel Achar. The plants growing in the pot belong to Shimon. And they would like to make a transfer of ownership. Mochar Bal Otzitz Lebal Zroim. So Ruven, the pot owner, would like to sell his pot to uh, Shemayin. Here, take the pot for your plants. The pot is considered metatalin. It's a mobile object, in which case, in order to be kainah, you need to do either mishicha, bring it into your domain, or hagba, lifting it. These are methods of kinyanim pertaining to metatalin, to items. So as soon as Shemayin just does mishicha, pulls this uh, pot to him, himself, he's kainah, the pot, because although the plants inside are considered uh, connected to the ground and are classified as karka, but not the pot, that's metatalin, for which, for, for which Meshicha accomplishes change of ownership. But in the reverse, Mochar Baal's Roim Labal Atzit, suppose the plant owner, Shimon, would like to transfer his plants to the pot owner, to Ruvain. The plants are considered karka. Like Konachi Yachsak Bezroim. In this case, Ruben can only be clean if he accomplished a proper, he effected a proper Kenyan. Amasa Chazaka, Rashi says, for instance, weeding or um, overturning the soil a bit. Those are considered expressions of ownership of Chazaka, of taking possession, which applies to land, to Karka. Otus Zroim Shalecha. Now we have the pot and the content belonging to one person. A different case, right? And he sells them to somebody else, to Shimon. How is Shimon meant to do his Kenyan? There are two parts, two aspects. We have the Karka aspect, the content of the pot, and we have the pot itself. So if he uh, made a, a Kenyan, Chazaka, on the content, on the plants, which is a proper Kenyan for the content because it's Karka, like we explained before, since the pot was perforated, that as a whole, in which case the content is feeding off the ground, it is considered mechubar lakarka, in which case a ma'asacha zaka makes that kinyan. But he gets a free wee. He gets the atzitz as well, which sort of rides along with the karka, kana atzitz. Once he makes chazaka on the karka, he gets the pot along with it. Although, typically, the Kinyan Chazaka is not uh, meant for metatalin such as the pot, but in this case it works. Because it sort of piggybacks onto the Karka. Vuzui Shashanino, as we learned in the Mishnah, Nechosim She'ein Lahem Achrayis. Items which uh, don't provide security, such as mobile items, Chafetzin, which aren't safe and secure in their place, they can just be taken from place to place. You wouldn't lend somebody money and put a lien on metal. It's not secure. It's not something to rely on. That's why it's called Ein Lohem Achrayiz. These items require specific types of Kinyanim. Meshicha, Hagba. But, we have an exception. Niknin, Im Nechasim, Sheish Lohem Achrayiz. Suppose he's purchasing a karka, which is called Yesh Lohem Achrayiz. Either through Bekesa, through money, or Bishtar, or document, or or taking ownership in the karka itself. Since he's purchasing an item along with it, it goes together in one package. So again, if Ruin, who owns the pot with the content, sells it to Shimon, how is he kind of? If he does a chazaka on the Yisroim, he will be kind of not only the Yisroim, but the Atzitz comes along with it. But he made a chazaka on the Atzitz. He did some sort of a change in the Atzis to show ownership. No, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't work on the Atzis. Atzis is metatlan. You need a different type of kin. Hid Meshicha, Hagba. Af Atzis like Kono, not only is he 
I'm not going to be kind of the content. He's not even kind of the pot until he makes chazaka on the content. Now, nikvay baritz v'noyvay bechutz laritz. Here comes a new question. You have a flower pot whose hole, right, the perforation through which the plant would draw its uh, nutrients, is on Eretz Yisrael. So the the pot is straddling the border. One part of it is over Eretz Yisrael proper, which is Chayiv and Truma and Maser, and that's where the hole lies. V'noyfa b'chutz l'aretz, and the actual plant is growing on the chutz l'aretz side of the, of the pot. What do we do? How do we classify this plant? Do you look at the source of nutrients, the source of life, which is Eretz Yisrael, in which case it's classified as an Eretz Yisrael growth, and a Chayiv and Truma, Chayiv and Maser, or do you look at the uh, location of the actual plant, which is outside Eretz Yisrael? Abaya Omar Bas Nikva Azlinon, you look at the source of life, the Nekev, the whole of the pot, Rav Omar Bas Nikva Azlinon, you look at the plant itself, where it's leaning to. Now, but the Ashrush, if it uh, took a root, you see the roots coming through that hole into the ground of Eretz Yisrael. Kuli Amalei Pligi, everybody would agree. There's no Machlekes. That, of course, is considered Mechubar to Eretz Yisrael and is part of an Eretz Yisrael growth. Ki Pligi B'dolei Ashrish, the question is if there are no roots running through that hole. It's just sort of feeding through the air. Then we have a question. They look at the position of the hole or the, um, you know, the, the leaves, the actual plant. Asks the Gemara, really? But the Ashrash lay pligi. When there are when there are roots, there's no question in terms of determining location. Really, we seem to have a machlekes, even by the Ashrash. But none. We have a mission. Shtei ginois zu al gavzu. Picture two gardens, a bi-level garden, an upper garden belonging to, belonging to Ruven, and then we have a lower garden, side by side belonging to Shimon, and something's growing right in that wall, in between, rooted into. The upper garden, so to speak, is drawing from the upper garden, right? But it's growing into the airspace of the lower garden. Who owns it? There is Yerak growing in between the gardens. The upper one is the owner. It belongs to the fellow on the bottom. Despite the fact that it's rooted into the upper chunk of earth. Why does Rabbi to say it belongs to the guy in bottom? So we see that even when we have Sharashim going in one direction, it can still belong to the other person, it can still relate to the other area. Where the plant is actually lo- located, in this case, the airspace of Shimon's lower garden. And you're telling me a minute ago that if there are Hashrash, if there's uh, rooting, and then, of course, the plant rela- relates to the location where it's rooted into. Here we seem to see otherwise. Answers the Gemara, no, no, no. You know, over there we're speaking about, you know, arguments and positions regarding monetary ownership. Choshe Mishpat, it's a different story. Hasam Kutatani Tama. The Machlekes there is, is about the reasons stated in that Mishnah. Amar Meir, Mayim Yeritze Elyu and Lito Safari. You see, the upper one, if he, if he decides to um, excavate his, his offer, to remove his garden, there goes the plant. Well, the counter-argument to that is, Likewise, if the fellow on the bottom, at the lower level, decides to fill his airspace with, with uh, earth, once again, in Kanyarak, there is no uh, plant. So basically, in terms of we have an argument in both directions. And therefore we have the Machlekes. But when it comes to questions of Kedushas, Eretz Yisrael, Chutz Laaretz, of course, the Gemara is assuming that the uh, the roots determine location. Really? Even when there are roots, there are no Machlekes. But we have Machlekes even when you have roots. Ilan So regarding uh, the Eretz Yisrael question, even in a situation where we have Sharashim, we still stand to have a Machlaikis. Elon Shemiktasibarat. So picture a tree straddling the border. Half in that there's a stroll, half out. 
What happens to the produce growing off that tree? It's a mix. Tevel, v'chulin mu'raven zebazeh. David Rebbe. Rebbe maintains that you have a full mix there. Part of the tree is nurturing over its Yisrael. Part of it from Chutzlar. So the fruit there is sort of a mix. Part chayev, part potter. And Rashi says, Nafkamina would be that the only way to take Truma and Master is to sort of separate from those fruit itself. You can't take from some other location because maybe the other one is really chayev and here it's part, part. Bottom line is, you have a mix. Rabbi Nashim I don't know, it's not so complicated. Hagadil Bechi of Chayev. Hagadil Bechtur Potter. Take a look at the tree. A fruit growing on the Eretz Yisrael side of the tree. Miss Chayev and Truma. The other side is Potter. Okay, my love, shall we not assume that this tree is positioned half in, half out? Miktas Neifa Baritz. Miktas Neifa Bechut Laritz. Right? Part of the actual tree is here, part is there. And what do we see? That uh, according to Rabbi Shimnam Lil, whatever grows outside of its row is considered a chutzlar, its produce, despite the fact we're assuming that the um, all the roots are in Eretz Yisrael. Here we go, Machlekes, even when there are Shiroshim in Eretz Yisrael. No, says the Gemara. Like, Miktas Shiroshim, Baretz. U Miktas Shiroshim, Mechutz Laretz. We're speaking that not only is the tree itself, the trunk and the branches, half there and half here, the roots themselves are split. Part of which are in Eretz Yisrael, part of which are growing outside Eretz Yisrael. So here we can understand uh, why, you know, the tree is sort of uh, sort of a mix. So if all the roots would be in one location, of course that would you know, that would be considered the determination in terms of how to classify the tree. But here, the roots themselves are distributed part here and part here. Um, my time, uh, the, uh, well, it says, the, well, okay, you've solved that problem, but let's go back to this mishta. Right? Shingon Lil says, whatever grows on this side belongs to this side, whatever grows on that side belongs to that side. Now, you know, the, the, uh, the roots bring up uh, nutrients and sap, and all that goes into the trunk and gets sort of uh, diluted, gets mixed up. So how can you determine that whatever grows on the Eretz side is uh, feeding off Eretz ground and likewise on the other side from Chutz Laretz. How do you know what's feeding off what? The Mav Sektsum was speaking that the, the roots down there are sort of separated, properly separated with a, with a rock. So there, there's nothing going from one side to the other. And therefore, he says, uh, there's a full separation. The roots on this side are sort of feeding this side, and the ones on the other side, are feeding, they're not mixing up. Well, says, they're my time in the Rebbe. So what's Rebbe's for? Rebbe doesn't uh, divide the tree in this manner. He says, the whole tree, all the fruit, whether it's on this side or that side, are all the same story, they're all mixed. They're considered part, part. The Hadri Avi, because he holds that the Yenika, the nutrients, once they get into the tree, they mix up. The ones coming from this side will go over to the other side, and vice versa. You can't necessarily pinpoint which Yenika is traveling to which fruit. Mike Mifli, what's the uh, Machlekes about? Mar Savar Avira Mebalbo. Rabbi holds, although the roots themselves are fully separated, but once it gets up, out of the ground, it uh, it all mixes together, creating a big mix. Whereas Rabban Shimon Megamliel disagrees, he holds the Yenika, the nutrients coming up on this side, stay on that side, producing the Yisrael fruit, and the ones coming from the Chutzlarts are producing the Chutzlarts fruit, and there's no mix whatsoever. Let's just summarize this Gemara. We have a flower pot with growth within it. The flower pot itself is considered an item, not karka, which requires its own type of kinyan, and the content is considered karka, which has its own method of kinyan. You have a flower pot with a hole, 
right? That's what we're speaking about. The Otis Naku. The hole is on this side of the border, and it's strong. The knife, the plant, is leaning on the other side. Uh, which way do you go? So Mar says, well, if uh, it took root, there's no question that it's considered, uh, you know, based on the root location. And if there are no roots, that's the machlekes. Abayi says, you look at the hole, that's where it's drawing from. And Rava says, you look at the knife, the position of the actual plant. We did discuss uh, a Chayish Mishpat discussion uh, where we have arguments in both directions and that generates a new Machlekes regarding the double garden. We had a Shiloh about a tree, a unique location, a unique situation with a um, you know, two-tier, two, uh, two-part root system separated by a Tsunma. And the question is, how to treat the fruit on top? Rebbe says, it's all a mix. And Rabbi Shim Gamliel says, well, the one growing on this side belongs to this side, and likewise the other side. Okay, let's go back to get for a minute. Rabbi Nehem Seir Oimer, you know, don't write a get on paper which had already been erased, or on diphthera, which is uh, unprocessed leather, unprocessed skin, uh, because it can be easily forged. And the Chachamim allow it. Omer Abchia Bar Asi Mishmedula. Gimul Oyer There are three different types of animal skins representing three different stages of uh, processing. One is called matzo, one is called chaifa, one is called vidiftera. Vidiftera is the one mentioned in the mission. I want to explain each one and the uh, halachas pertaining to that type of skin. When we speak about matzo, what is that? Totally unprocessed. Kemash As the word matzo. Matzah means unprocessed uh, dough, uh, right? Not properly processed, no rising, etc. So the skin as well is totally unprocessed. The loy it wasn't salted. The loy kamiach, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, there was no flour added to it. The loy afitz, nor was this afitzan material, this gall nut powder, applied to the skin. Lamayhilchasa. So, you know, the three different types, and Rashi says they have different names, and different shiurim, different measures, different uh, required measures. Why well, is pertaining to what? Why would you speak about the, the size of these things? Pertaining to what? Like, saw Shabbos. Regarding the malach of carrying in the street on Shabbos, which requires something of substance, something prominent, something that has chashiva, something that has uh, function and use. So when it comes to Atzeres Shabbos, these three types of leathers have different shiurim, which relate to their function and their use. Right? So when it comes to the matzah, which is totally raw, the kama shiurim, what's the shiur of this item pertaining to a malach of carrying? Enough to uh, wrap and protect a small uh, weight. So it's common for them to wrap their weights with leather. They would use this type of unprocessed leather, because why process it for this purpose? So this raw, so to speak, leather was perfect for this job. The kama, how large is this small weight? Amar bayi, a certain type of uh, weight that they used in Pupadisa, that would be the perfect example of the size. Ki riva, the river, quarter of a quarter of Pupadisa. So that's how much leather is required for the Haitzos Shabbos, if leather that we're speaking is the matzah leather. What about the next level, chaifa, what is that? That was partially processed. The maliach, it was salted, like the like kamiach, but flour was not yet, wasn't yet treated with flour. The like afitz, likewise, the afitz was not yet applied. My hilchas, uh, like uh, Shabbos, once again, the shear over here pertains to Shabbos. We come shear, how much is the shear of this type of leather? Because it's not, erk de lasas kamiach, enough to um, wrap around an amulet. And the third type of leather pertains to our Mishnah, diftera. That's already more advanced. The malech v'kamiach, salted and flowered. Loi afitz without the afitz and lamai hilcha. So what's that for? Again, let's say Shabbos. The shear for Shabbos v'kam shiurei. How much is that? Okay, lichta v'elavsa get. Enough to write a get. Twelve lines. Um, I'm going to quote a reader of I'm Sorry, going to quote a rabbanan. A cham machshirin that you can write a get on this. So it's useful for that purpose, and that is considered a prominent, uh, prominently sized, useful sized. Uh, 
um, um, piece of parchment. Now, the Chachama Machshar, even though you can manipulate it, you can forge it, Man Chachamim, who are these Chachamim and why are they allowing it? Amr Rabbi Lazar, the Amr, he says, look, Rabbi Lazar, this is Rabbi Lazar the Tana. The Omar Edom is Siri Karti. He holds up Menat Torah. We don't need Chasimois. We don't need signatures on the get. As long as you deliver the get in the presence of two Edom, and they read it, and they know what exactly the get is saying. So there's no point of forging. There's no concern of Ziyuf. Vamar Rabbi Lezer. Rabbi Lezer continues and explains like Yichshar Rabbi Lezer Alter. He only allows it to be done if the you know the get is being brought to Bezin as soon as it was given. Rashi says on the same day. So it was delivered today in front of Edom Asira, and then uh, they go to Bez, and look, uh, you know, she's divorced, and everybody knows what's going on, um, and there's no concern of anybody forgetting the content of the get. It's just so close by. But let's say it's 10 days later. So it was delivered on Sunday, and then 10 days later, they come to Bez, and okay, I'm divorced. No, no, no. We can't really certify this. We can't confirm it. You know why? It's too... Too far gone. We're concerned that perhaps there was some sort of condition in the get. And ten days later, everybody forgets about it. The Adam, the Adam Masir, totally lost their uh, recollection, and now she goes and she reforges it. She can sort of erase the whole get and rewrite it without the condition. So it's only okay if it's, you know, uh, close proximity to the scene of the get. Rabbi Yechon Amar, no concern, I feel the Makana Tzara Yom, even 10 days later, is okay, Dim Isa Da'av Eitzna, because if there was a condition contained in the get, Midkat Chiri, the Edim Asir would remember. Vam Rabbi Lezer, another halacha, La Yechsh Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Lezer the Tan only allows it. Through Edim Asir Ala Begitin, only pertaining to a get, Aval Beshar Shtoresh Lai, but other documents can't be done in this manner. In a manner that allows for forging, no. So other type of documents are placed in a klicheres for long-term storing, for long-term recording. So basically we have to keep records that stay for a long time and therefore something that can be manipulated and forged doesn't work. So even Rabbi Leza the Tano, who says that typically Edi Mesira are okay, but that's only by a get. Rashi says a get it's not meant for, you know, long-term, uh, it's not a long-term record, it's, it's meant for being mad to her to remarry. Right? You're not going to hold on to the get for years and years to collect with it. It's different than, a, you know, a deed of, of ownership or a shtar chayv. So by a get, you know, you can bring it right away to the best and they'll allow her to remarry, and there you go. And you can rip up the get. So therefore, even if, a lens to forging, but like we said, you do it right away. There's no concern of forging. But when it comes to other stories which are sitting around for years and years, down the road you might not find the Edim Mesira and you might rely on the Edim Chasima. And then you never know, maybe it was forged because it was written on this material that allows for forging. Rabbi Yechon Amari disagrees. I feel the stories, even other documents, can be kosher in this manner. But doesn't the Pasuk say, Laman Yamdu Yom Rabim, that the Ishtar has to be? something that provides long-term records, the Pasuk there is just giving us good advice, do it in a way that, you know, that provides long-term uh, you know, verification, but technically, our star does not have to provide that service. Okay. So again, we spoke about the uh, flower pot, all the halachas, about kinyanim, about Yisrael, chutzlorets, we discussed the three types of skins, and the Allah and the Mishnah regarding using forgeable material, according to Rabbi Yudim Sira, no, according to Rabbi yes, because this is Rabbi Lezer speaking, the Edim Sira verified the content of the Shtar, there's no concern of forging. And the question was, you know, how far do we stretch it? Is it just an immediate heter or even a long term heter? Is it just for Gitin or even for Shtaris? All the best to you and Hatzlacha Rabbah.